Do you read Stephen King? Good news, there's a club for you, the Losers Club. Every Friday, us losers journey through the never-ending wastelands of King's Dominion. We sink our teeth into each of King's novels, dive deep into the lore, and review every adaptation. Even better, we're always having guests over. Thomas Jane, Will Wheaton, Mary Lambert, Mick Garris, the list goes on. So what are you waiting for? Join us as we read on through long days and pleasant nights. Consequence Podcast Network. Hey, welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with... It's an audio interview series presented by WFPK Independent Louisville at WFPK.org. Consequence of Sound and the Consequence Podcast Network. Uh, big hello to all the subscribers. Thanks for checking out the series multiple times every single week. We do release new ones Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays. Of course, if you're not subscribed, you can keep up with all of those that come out just by uh, seeking out wherever you get your podcast from, probably where you're listening to this right now, just hitting that subscribe button. That does include iTunes and Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube. YouTube, Acast, Stitcher, Podchaser, and all the other spots. I'm Kyle Mayer. Today, my guest, Wayne Coyne of the Flaming Lips. It is always so much fun to talk with Wayne Coyne. And for this round, we're going to be getting into an album called King's Mouth. It's actually part of a bigger concept. Uh, there, it started as an installation back in 2014, as Wayne tells us, and has even been a, a children's book and now a record. And with all of that, it's safe to say it is a concept record. Wayne's going to tell us about the concept, inviting Mick Jones from The Clash to be the narrator through the story, and how the album has kind of coincidentally, after all this time, lined up with Wayne becoming a dad for the first time. We'll hear about some of the themes that intersect between his personal life and the characters in the songs, from the happier sides to the darker ideas of childbirth. And we'll talk about perceptions of songs. It's one thing to write a song, and it's a completely different thing to put it out into the world and for listeners to take it in as their own. Take a song with a title like Giant Baby. For at least half of the country, there's probably going to be a presidential image that comes to mind. We'll definitely be getting Wayne's thoughts on that as well, and an update on the next release, or releases, I should say. As usual, the Flaming Lips have a lot in the vaults that they're planning on bringing out, and Wayne will give us the rundown of every bit of that as well. Talking about the record King's Mouth, Music and Songs, it's Kyle Meredith with Wayne Coyne of the Flaming Lips. Hello, Kyle. It was great seeing you all again uh, here in Louisville at the Bourbon and Beyond Festival. It's always such a great show that you put on, and that was another uh, fantastic set. Thank you. That was hey, It was. It was. You never know what those things are going to be like. I mean, it's it's outrageous that it's that many people on that hot of a day. It's And it's still Friday afternoon. You know, it's not, right. it wasn't the weekend yet. You know, like, oh, my gosh. And, you know, we've played quite a few of these things where they're, I don't think they're giving away, maybe they're not giving it away anymore, but we used to play things where they are they're giving away a lot of booze during the day and it's like oh my gosh but um pretty pretty fantastic festival i mean for louisville i mean i I, sometimes i think louisville people would think louisville is just a a little spot somewhere and it's a that's a that's a great great giant festival that's amazing and and we've we've had a few around here i know you guys have played forecastle in the past i mean there's there's a nice history there so we're always appreciative yeah yeah well thank you well, I, I also want to compliment you on the latest record with King's Mouth Music and Songs, which I've been listening to. You know, we're playing Giant Baby around here um, as one of the many tracks that kind of diving into. But I, I thought we'd kind of get into this record a, a bit as well, because this is not, I guess, what you'd call a typical album. I mean, even the narration itself makes something different, but, but there is a concept here, right? Well, I think, you know, you saying that is exactly the reason why it would start to appeal to us to be like, oh, well, let's make, a, you know, an actual narrative to the record. You know, I, oftentimes with our records, we, you know, we know the secret narrative or the concept or, or the, you know, the subliminal story that's going on, which I think a lot of artists do. And then you just make songs that kind of are fun to listen to and people can sing along to. But, you know, you know the real story behind them or something but with this record i think you know it started as that the art installation which was really quite a long time ago now 2014 uh, 2015 and so you know this it started to already exist as 
a creation. And then the, the curator at the very first art museum that we were installing it in, he, you know, he, he encouraged me to come up with a little bit of a story just so, you know, in a sense that the way the installation works is like six or seven people can get inside of it. And at that time, it was about a 10 minute program. And so there would be people waiting outside to get in. You know, let's say if you had 100 people waiting, you know, it would you'd want there to be something else to do while you're waiting to get inside of this thing, you know. And he was he, he encouraged me to do these drawings and paintings collage sort of things that are part of the album even now that that image that's on the cover is part of that Mm -hmm. and to come up with a little bit of a narrative or a story and all this you know just sort of happened we didn't think about it too much which is probably why it's it's endearing at all you know sometimes you overthink things and uh we're lucky that this kind of happened and so three or four years down the line you know we're making songs that kind of just go with this narrative that we made up you know back in 2014 2015 and it felt very much like we're just making songs to go with a story that somebody else has already put in place you know so even though it was us that put it in place it felt long ago enough that it was already established and and then we felt like oh we're just making songs for that and so i think that really helped us not get distracted and veer off the track and then of course when mick jones came on board and did that great narration which for me is such a great flavor to the album i think that just you know that really sealed it as like oh man now we know exactly what we're doing once we had him we you know we really pushed right ahead to finish it all up it was it really changed the you know made it all seem more perfect because it would seem like you, when you've got, you know, three different factions like that, a book, which would also come part of it, uh, the installation that you're talking about, and, and then the record itself, it would seem like a lot of times there would be a challenge to make sure the songs could stand on their own out of concept. But I guess that's the, I don't get that from you. Like it almost kind of linked together. You know, what, what, what do you call it when you, you, you deconstruct something to build it <laughs> first, you know? I would say the same thing, you know, going into it. But, you know, it is funny how music doesn't really need music and songs and stuff like that they don't really need your help you know we always think oh we need to make it simple we need to make it this we need to make it that you know i think if a group of critics got together and analyzed the song happy birthday they probably would say you know it's too simple it's never going to work you know who (laughs) you know who's going to sing this dumb thing you know and it's just you know that's just the nature of of music it's just mysterious and it's just kind of there's things about it that you like that once you begin to think about them you can't think why you like it it's like it's like eating your favorite food it's not something you can think about you you know you like it first and then you find a reason why you like it or dislike it or whatever later and music is really doing the same thing and so you know all along the way i've always liked even like the beatles yellow submarine you know it's it's somewhere along the way it's implied that it's well it's a story and here's a little piece of the story but i never thought of it very much as being connected or not connected. I just liked the song and didn't really think that much about what it was connected to or the rest of the story. I just thought, well, that's, this is the, the, the song, you know? And so the things that have Mick Jones's narration on them, I mean, I sort of feel like his voice and just the tone of it and this gentle, eccentric warbling that he, you know, that he speaks with. To me, I just sort of feel like it's just another great sounding instrument that's in our music. And yeah, he is telling Telling a story, and yeah, yeah, it does make sense. But you could also listen to it almost abstractly, mm. you know, if you didn't speak English or something, and like it just for the tone that it is. So, you know, I don't, I don't really, I try not to get in the way too much of what the music is capable of, and not overthink it. You know, uh, I'll say as a side note, uh, a bit coincidentally here, but uh, "Happy Birthday," the song itself, written by two sisters right here in Louisville. You gotta be kidding me! No, no, they're still, they're actually, and they're what? buried here too. Yeah, there's, uh, it was, uh, they ran. And- and uh, a school, an orphanage school, and uh, they wrote the song here, just uh, about a half a mile from where I'm sitting. <laughs> oh my gosh! And are they celebrated for this song? I mean, is that is that the notable thing that's like on their tombstones or something like? That? You would think it'd be celebrated more because that's more or less like the most famous song 
in the world. I mean, arguably, but more or less. <laughs> They're not celebrated as much as they should be, yeah, I'll I mean, say that. I, well, I mean, I speak about it all the time. It's like, you know, people do oftentimes delve into, like, songwriting and, and how, you know, what it is and how complicated it is and how, how brainy it is and all this sort of stuff. And I'm like, yeah, I guess maybe. But, um, you know, I point out Happy Birthday is one of the greatest the greatest songs ever written. It's one of the most useful songs ever written. <laughs> And useful is a good thing for a song to be. We run into that a lot when people talk about our song, Do You Realize, being used at like weddings and the births of their children and, and funerals and things like that. And I'm like, I think it's a great, great thing that, that songs can be of use. You know, it's not just, oh, it's not just what the Flaming Lips want it to be. It, it goes out there in the world and it can be, people can use it for these things. And I think that's a great, great thing. I, that's amazing. I'll, as soon as we get done, I'll, I'll Google this song, Happy Birthday, and I'll, I'll find Find out a little bit more about this. Yeah, please do. Well, you, 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 you've said a couple things that makes an easy seg here, too, because uh, you, you've also become a new dad, and congratulations on that. Yes, thank you. Yeah, this whole thing, I mean, so the it, it traces back, obviously, long before the birth of your child, but now it, you know, with this album being maybe the finished product of the whole thing, it seems kind of custom-built for that world of, uh, of, of you know, childhood stories and and especially in those trippier 60s or early 70s type of children's books that kind of went out there and and I, I did wonder did that play into any of the actual album of uh, the music well i think in the very beginning of making it we did have you know an agenda of making it like a children's book you know meaning like if kids wanted to go to this King's Mouth installation, you know, because I because they really do love it, you know, and I didn't want it to be put off by parents that are thinking, oh, this is just too weird or too, you know, that that's got some adult themes in it, which we've done that in the past, you know. Oftentimes, the Flaming Lips music sounds like it could be children's music, and then it's got you know all kinds of curse words in it and all kinds <laughs> of stuff where it's like, well, it's made for like adult kids, you know, to whereas. I, I think we were making a great effort to say this could you could you could play this for your ten year old or, or eight year old and feel like it's it's working or there you know you wouldn't feel too uncomfortable about it. So that was that was part of the agenda even when it went in to its very first installation. You know that that was part of it too. It's like we wanted it to be families could come and everybody could like it and it wouldn't be awkward for anybody. So that stayed true to the album and the music and the lyrics and all that. And then I agree with you, you know, this, the timing of this album coming out, our little boy was born right at the beginning of June. And this album really came out kind of all around that same time. And it looks very much like a, like a great coincidence, which, you know, it, it really mostly is, but I think, yeah, you know, as as the last year was going along, yeah, it was a bit, there's just must have been something, you know, that was a change that was occurring in me or something like that where you have a desire to do something like this and and stay with it. I mean, you know, oftentimes you know, musicians and artists, you know, what, what you be, the desire you begin with can change a hundred times and not be what it ends up being or whatever. And I think with this, as we were finishing it and as, as we knew we were going to have a baby, all that kind of helped focus it to be like, yes, it's this type of record. And I was glad that the two were sort of brought into the world kind of at the same time, because it let us talk about a lot of, you know, different aspects of being in a, in an artist and being a musician and making records and being a father and all those things that I've really never um, had to talk about before or, or, or had the opportunity to talk about before. So, yeah, I, I think it's all great. It's all it's all still mystifying and wonderful, uh, you know, for me. It's not to say that there aren't any, I guess, darker aspects that go along with this, too, because maybe similar to Do You Realize, if I understand it right, a, a song like a, a Mother Universe, you know, it talks about a death during a childbirth and I thought, oh, I, you know, and, and here you are about to become a father. And I wonder if there's any connection there. <laughs> well, well, right. I mean, I think any kind of, you know, active imagination can often go to the worst things possible and you can't get away from them. And I think music helps you in that way. It's like songs really can confront, you know, unspeakable things with a sort of set beauty and love that lets you embrace these ideas without having to think about them on your own, you know, and and I think Stephen and I, you know, the, the the writers mostly of the Flaming Lips music, I think we've become more comfortable with singing about things like that and knowing that it's it's in a song, you know, and and the subject and the lyric 
they're sort of within this coloring and this this atmosphere of care and love and understanding that I think helps us say those things because they're all things that are kind of they're deep within Stephen and I. I mean Stephen Stephen lost his mother I think he was just 10 or 11 years old you know and that's that's a pretty devastating time for a, a young sensitive person who's going to go on to be an artist and a musician to to have something like that happen to him and you don't often know how much of that you can put into your music or how much is already there and you don't realize it or whatever. And sometimes when we're doing something like this, where it is sort of about the good bits of that, but also, you know, the sad bits of, of stuff like that, we just go with the flow. And, and I don't always know how it, it is going to affect the listener in that way. But I know, you know, parts of the way Stephen and I have lived or have grown up or whatever, you know, it's, it's really very normal, you know, and a lot of times the things that we're singing about are a normal kind of sadness that most people eventually growing up are going to, are going to have and confront and, and, and have want to deal with or whatever. So I think that's part of the, the great, you know, acceptance and beauty of doing music like this is, is you sort of feel like, yeah, it's, it's my, it's the way I feel about it, but I feel like it's, not that far away from the way you would feel about it too you know we're all sharing these experiences in that way but i think the flaming lips have a good emotional attack at songs and i so sometimes i feel like yeah we, we'll think about that i think that can work and not feel ironic or not feel like a joke or not feel like something silly you know and perception uh, is a big thing about how a listener takes it i i will even go back you know i mentioned we're playing giant baby when i first looked at that title nine times out of ten if another artist wrote that right now it was like okay that's the trump song I guess time and space means a lot to how we're going to be, what our perception of those songs are going to be. Well, I would agree. And I, and people have asked me, you know, honestly, like, is this in some way talking about Donald Trump? And I, I would say for Stephen and I, absolutely not. You know, I mean, I think if we were younger and we were in our twenties or maybe a teenager or something like, like Billie Eilish, you know, we would be inserting that stuff into our music because, I don't know when you're younger, a year, two years or four years of a presidency is a major, major piece of your life. <laughs> but um, for us, you know, we started to make this music before. I mean, Donald Trump's been around a long time, but before he was president, for sure. You know, and we'll continue to talk about it and listen to it long after he's gone. And I really have never thought in those ways that we would use Flaming Lips music in some way to be a secret you know, combatant that's going to do this. I don't really feel that way. I feel like, you know, if the listener wants to tie that into it, of course they can, but I would never, I'd never really sing about something like that. I would just go out and try to change it and then just write a song about, you know, uh, about change. I would never write a song about, uh, about someone like Donald Trump and, and leave it as a secret or something, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, we actually have Donald Trump in a lyric from 2006 in the song called Free Radical. We were using his, his name and his image and kind of what he represented in the culture as kind of a put down. And yet, I mean, here we are. It Now it's become a kind of reality. And yes, I mean, we weren't really protesting about him even then. We were protesting about what, you know, in a sense, what he represented even then. But I don't think it's his fault. I mean, I think some of it is that that sort of selfish you know, egotistical personality, I think he appeals to a certain American out there. It's always the way it works. You know, it's not really the person. It's kind of that they represent a character that's already, you know, a personality type that's already in the culture, and suddenly they're they're representing them and speaking for them. And so I don't always really just blame them. I mean, he has to be voted on. People have to show up at his rallies, and people have to stick up for him. And so it's, you know, it's a funny thing. But I'd say for us, no. I mean, we're not inserting Donald Trump into that. But I could see where that title, Giant Baby, would think, oh, I, I think I know what they're talking about. It's like, well, it's to us, it's really just a funny, it's just a funny title to use those two words together. I mean, we, and even in the lyrics, we sing about that sort of thing. He is giant but he's a baby and yeah it's it's more that we just think it's absurd well i, I don't want to leave it on that i know we got to wrap up here I, I will ask i know there's some rumors already circulating that you're talking about the record uh, maybe even another record coming out next year is that is that in the works or are we still thinking further down the road 
Well, we always have a lot of things going on. I mean, at the at, in November we we've got this long-awaited the Flaming Lips playing with the Denver Symphony Orchestra at the at live at the Red Rocks Amphitheater. There, that's finally coming out. Though it was recorded in 2016, and we have a couple of albums that we've recorded with some other people. There's a there's a, a group a, a duo of a guitar player and a drummer called Deep Valley, and these two girls came out um, about two years ago now, and we started working on some music, and that record is going to come out, so it's kind of the Flaming Lips and Deep Valley. Not positive what we're going to call it yet, and that record comes out. And then I think by next summer, we have another Flaming Lips album, and it's really shaping up to be a, a great, great, really stumbled upon some great, great unique songs and stuff, so I think that's going to be we're still working on that. So working on that through October and November, we should, we should know pretty soon if we'll be able to finish it in time. But um, yeah. So, but always a lot of things going on. I think that's just the way our life is. We're always recording. We're always writing songs, always making things up and always being involved with other musicians and artists. It's just, um, it's just the greatest life you could ever think of, you know? And, and you make it so fun for the fans too. It's always so fun to be a fan of the flaming lips. And, and I appreciate that. I appreciate that every single time. Well, Kyle, that's a great thing to say. Dang, thank you. That, that, that's a cool, cool thing. Thank you. Wayne, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so much for taking the time today. Uh, and, and, you know, have some fun out there on the tour. Uh, I'll be uh, looking forward to catching the next date. All right, well, cool. And I'll look up this happy birthday song. Thank you for in- enlightening me. All right, all right, bye. <laughs> As always, my thanks to Wayne Coyne. The latest album from the Flaming Lips is called King's Mouth. Music and songs. Now, as I do every now and then, I'm also going to include some older interviews I've had with Wayne. This one here comes back from 2014 when uh, Wayne and I caught up backstage at the Hangout Music Festival, where we got to talk about celebrity Miley Cyrus and Kesha, as well as the Beatles, Twitter, and helping homeless animals as well. This is right after they released the album The Terror and were releasing with a little help from my friends. So we'll jump into it, part two of Kyle Meredith with the Flaming Lips. All right, good to see you again. Uh, You are kind of like the busiest man in rock who's not promoting an album. And that seems to always happen for you. Dude doesn't... Well, I I guess, you know, in promoting albums now, it it does... I I mean, we put out a lot of stuff. Right. You know, I I mean, I think it's still true for some big acts where you put out a record and then you tour the world for five years and then you, you you get together and you put out another one. But really, even starting a couple of years ago, we just weren't... It wasn't that we we didn't even really want to do that anymore. It, yeah. You know, it, it, for us, it just got to be a little bit, um, I guess, boring. Yeah. You know, and whatever we wanted to do more in that time, we would just start to do it, um, and it got to be more um, manageable for us anyway to just to put them out when we felt like right. it, as opposed to getting in line in the slot, doing the campaign. Yeah, with yeah. the you know right. with the big major label and all that. You know. Um, that's part of the things that we didn't like about, you know, being on Warner Brothers all the time. Is it's this giant machine and mm-hmm. takes you know six months just to get anything going, you know. Right. And I think um, little by little, I think the way that we work our contract and stuff like that, I think really suits us now that we yeah. we do we do a lot of stuff. Yeah. Well, yeah, and, and it's fun to watch. It's fun to listen about. Do you ever because the stuff you do isn't all the normal stuff. Do you ever right. get worried that the story is bigger than the music? Because there's a lot to write about with you yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> no, not really. I mean, to me, I, I mean, music without all this other stuff sometimes is just it doesn't it doesn't have, yeah. you know, it, it it alone doesn't have the personality and all this stuff that, um, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of groups that I'll hear their music, um, and not really get it until you see them or you you, you read something about them yeah. or you they're involved in something. You you see a little bit more into what they're about. So. No, I think all that is wonderful. I mean, you know, one of the most, um, you know, uh, uh, what do we say, public groups out there ever would be a, a group like the Beatles, sure. you know. Sure. And I would say, for my own taste, you know, the more that I knew about them, the more I loved them. The more you, you know? get, yeah. And you really, you know, you really understood what their, you know, what their music was about and their art was about and all that. So I never fear that, but I'm not really trying to do that. You know, sometimes I just think um, to talk about music is really kind of, you know, it's just not, it's just kind of dumb. Right. You know, we're you really can't tell talk- me where it comes from. You, none of that stuff. Well, it's like yeah. no one really is going to talk about notes and amplifiers right, right, and right. chords, you know, and, and, and recording studios. I mean, really, in a sense, that's that's 
not really what music is. Music yeah. is this life, yeah. and this is something you get to listen to that tells you something about the life. So, yeah, I mean, I would say I'm, I live a lot of, yeah. I live a lot of life. Yeah, it's a, it's a good <laughs> it's lifestyle. Great. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, yeah. It's awesome. Yeah, uh, there's a, there's one thing you've been doing uh, that is really interesting. I, I won't call it a downtime. It's not a downtime. Uh, you wrote the uh, the April Fool's note about celebrity. Um, or April first note. If yeah, you yeah. Call it April Fools, but April first note about celebrity. Yet you've you really kind of um, positioned yourself with celebrity this whole time. It, it's well, it's a really not, interesting. Well, contradiction I, is not the right word. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I, I mean, the way they presented it was this. sure, sure, I, yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, maybe, I mean. I mean, we're some, talking about Kesha and Miley and, and, and all of that, right? Right, now, but I mean, right. some of comedy now is so close. Right. When you're in it, you can see it really is so close that it, it is almost true at the same time. Yeah. You know, but um, I don't know. I mean, I know the power of these silly things like Twitter and Instagram, and, you know, anybody can go on there, and if they want to make a story out of it, they can. Mm. And they don't really have to call you up or be a publicist or anything now. And I, and I like that. Mm. You know, I, I think it was probably you know three or four years ago at least when I noticed that people were doing that in the newspapers and and the you know the little free entertainment mm -hmm. things around Oklahoma City they wouldn't really do an interview with Lady Gaga mm -hmm. but they could write articles about her all day because it's all right there it's on her Twitter and Instagram yeah. so it must be true you know <laughs> but I thought that was great because you could just start to say I think this is interesting today and yeah I'm doing this and if you're interested you can see what I'm doing and I think with a group like the Flaming Lips, I think seeing how we do it and seeing what we started to do mm -hmm. and then three weeks later, here's what it ended up being. You know, for an, if you're an artist, especially a young artist wondering, how does how do you do stuff? Yeah. I think it'd be wonderful to follow us. To have that whole thing. Yeah, because yeah. we started to do this, but then that didn't work out. And it's great to be able to change your mind. And yeah. you know, it's, you're not a fool if, if the idea didn't work out. You, you know, that, that's what all art is. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think we we it's good that we have more of a, a two way conversation with the artists that artists are as accessible? Because there's in a sense a bit of mystery going. Yeah, you yeah. know, Beatles, yeah, yeah. Zeppelin, they all had the mystery. Uh, uh, Pink Floyd, they had the mystery. You can imagine well, beyond yeah. their human. Uh, you know, I, well, I, I suppose, but I don't know. You know, the but, artist, I mean, someone can tweet at you, and you can answer back, and they've had a conversation. Which I think is great, point. right? Yeah. I mean, um, no, I mean, I, I for me, like, if I really love an artist, I mean, I I want to know as much as I can yeah. about them. Yeah. You know, and you want to know what they did. I mean, I think it's interesting to know what they did on these days. I mean, when those when those big books came out, finally, you know, probably in like when was it the early nineties that sort of documented every day that the Beatles were in the studio. Oh, right, right, right. Um, these were revelations yeah, to people, yeah. you know, and um, you really got to see it. They did this in the morning, and then that night they they finished Strawberry Fields Forever. Right, it's right. just amazing, yeah. you know, so I, I, don't, I don't think that at all. I mean, I think um, I'm, I'm putting it out there because I, I feel um, this is the life that our fans have given us, mm -hmm. and I don't yeah. waste it. I don't throw it away, and I, I just say, "Look, this is what I get to do every day, and I'm right. I'm going for it." You know. Yeah. With, with the, uh, I want to bring that back up. Uh, the two names I said a minute ago with Miley and Kesha. Yeah, yeah. I mm -hmm. think you're doing something really interesting, maybe unintentionally here, about taking pop, these stars that make pop, these yeah, yeah. musicians that yeah, yeah. make pop. Mm -hmm. Filtering through the system of the flaming lips, and when they come out, <laughs> they're different. Uh, Kesha, you know, she had a, a very public moment where she kind of derailed for a second, got herself back up on her feet. Yeah, yeah. Miley, uh, you know, if you weren't a fan of her music, now you guys are working with her. That's positive that you could be a fan of her. What I'm seeing sure, is there's yeah. this moment where the flaming lips are eating pop stars, digesting them, <laughs> crapping them back out into something psychedelic and way more interesting than before. Well, that's a great compliment. Thank you. <laughs> but I mean, it's mostly on their, on their. They're the ones doing it. I right. mean, I could, I could never call up Kesha if she didn't want yeah. me to call her and say, "Hey, we should do this." I mean, they're the ones, you know, that are that are saying, "Hey, coming we to do you, this. Yeah. you become their spirit animal." I hope so yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, but those two, um, more than really some others mm. that I that I've worked with here and there. I mean, they're absolutely wonderful. Yeah. Fearless, yeah. badass. I mean, I'm really curious to see how this Miley stuff comes out because this well, is, could be completely yeah, yeah. different for her. This could be a shock to her fan base. I don't, you know, I don't think so. I mean, I've seen them, and I, I the same thing I would tell Kesha. It's like they love you. Yeah. Um, music is just what they're hearing, sure. you know. And this idea that it's got to be a certain way. I'm like, yeah. no, they love you, and if you do it and you put yourself into it and you love it, yeah. 
you, I bet they'll love it too. Yeah. You know, and not try to be like, well, I got to be number one. It's right. like you're already number one in their hearts. It's not that right. And if you really do this through love, and I think real, I mean, that's what real artists want to do. I mean, if you don't get to evolve through your art and through your music, um, it'll just go insane. Yeah. I mean, if you don't have the desire to evolve, you'll try to do whatever you think is going to work. But if you have a desire to evolve, like like Miley mm -hmm. and like Kesha, mm -hmm. you don't want to do the same music you did last year, even if it's the biggest record in the world. You are already moving on. Same way uh, the, the Beatles or Radiohead or any of these groups, it's like you're, you're living in your music. It isn't just something you do so you have money at the end of the day. And I see that in them. They're not, I mean, it, it's not, they're not doing it as a career move. Sure. They're doing it because it's like, I, I love this. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, it's wonderful. You know? Yeah. yeah. You, you, we, we mentioned the Beatles a couple times too, and that's where I want to end because you're doing uh, with we the, are. The, and, and the so, whole Beatles album. Or? So we've done these, you know, right. we have our Pink own. Floyd and yeah. 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 And we, we have, I have my own studio and a lot of uh, bands come through and a lot of my friends and sometimes, you know, um, I sort of put it to them like you can record here, do whatever mm -hmm. you want, but you got to give me a mm -hmm. song. And we've done. Right. Uh, we did one of my favorite records, a, a record by uh, King Crimson, mm -hmm. the Court of the Crimson King. Just a little record that we do with our friends. We had done the Stone Roses first record. Where we all get together and people do different songs. And I had planned on doing Sgt. Pepper's really about three years ago. I was Which is a perfect record for you guys to do. What, well, what, I, well, I, the I'd zaniness that you yeah. can inject into it that, that I kind of imagine. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, so we had planned on doing it anyway, and then. Over the New Year's Eve, um, you know, shows that we were doing, we were doing two nights, and we decided the second night that we would do a kind of Lennon Beatles mm -hmm. set. Mm -hmm. So if you were there both nights, you'd see us do our Flaming Lips set, and then that second night, you'd right. see this extended <laughs> set. And we kind of accidentally worked up this really fantastic version of Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Yeah. And it had got out there on YouTube and people had seen it a bunch and the David Letterman people were doing, I mean, this was all just coincidence. We really had not considered that the Beatles were doing this 50 year thing right. or anything. We were just doing it because obviously we love John Lennon and the Beatles or whatever. And I think it had gotten out there and they asked us to do the Lucy in the Sky song uh, on, on the David Letterman mm -hmm. show and we asked John Lennon to do it with us and he, he jumped on. So it is kind of an incredible moment right well, there. Yeah. If you're a fan, I mean, like, are you ah, kidding? look what I get. Are you kidding? Yeah. So he's doing such good stuff right now. That new totally. record. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I mean, we, and yeah. we've totally been with him through all these things that he's really yeah. trying to do. Um, so it sort of just by coincidence became mm. the Flaming Lips doing Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Right. And when it came time to do stuff with Miley, we had a couple of tracks of our own that she was working on. We were working on songs together. And she was curious about, well, aren't you doing this, this Sgt. Pepper's record? And I was like, yeah. She's like, I'll, I'll, I'll be oh, on yeah, it. Yeah. So we had the track already ready. And that's yeah. why it was easy to say, because we, we did four or five things all in one yeah. short day. And we did that track and we did the, um, the Day in the Life track with her. And um, I mean, people don't realize, I mean, she is so, she's so into what she's doing. I and mean, these things are like one take. Right. You know, we would, we would be there as long as we, thought we needed to be but she she just sings the song and it's like well, it that's, is. That's great. so for you guys then what you know is it just for fun is like this is something fun are you trying to get something new out of those albums or you know well I mean for people that love different... music and you yeah. can you, know, you can you can listen to the way that they record and we do our own recordings mm -hmm. and we have producers that help us and stuff too but a lot of it's you know it's initiated by us doing it yeah um, yeah I mean any artist any musician if you if you delve into that stuff and you're really going, what are they doing there? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's phenomenal. Yeah. There's, a, there's a simplicity that people think, oh, it's just this and that. But there's a magic to it that isn't, it isn't so obvious. You can't if pull you, it off, but it makes yeah. you a better musician in the end. Well, it, it makes you go, oh my God. They yeah. didn't just do right. the simple thing. Right. They did this and they did that. And it's quirky. There's mistakes. They, yeah. they don't always sing on key. They don't always stop. You know, there's all these things that people take for granted as right. being like, well, these people know what they're doing. It's like, they didn't know what they were yeah. doing and they went for it anyway. And that's what I love about it. Every time we delve into music, you see these little, you learn something about it. It's great. Yeah. Right. And that music is so, it's so wonderful anyway. I mean, you could not run into someone who loves music that isn't going to love that music. And now you're a part of that album's history in a way. Well, it's in a stretch, but you know, yeah, it's yeah. like, I mean, maybe even it's just a Wikipedia page, but now you're part of that album's history. Well, I love it. Yeah. And I mean, I, and, but Part of the idea of being a, being a, being attached to um, 
Miley Cyrus and My Morning Jacket and yeah. you know, these other groups is that I want, especially I saw stuff that, that people know so much about the Beatles that if these weirdo groups do it, right. it'll get more attention. And part of this is is is, is the the charity thing that we're doing in Oklahoma City. Mm-hmm. This um this this volunteer organization that helps all these homeless animals, and dogs and cats mm-hmm. in Oklahoma City. I mean, they're 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 cool cool people. It's all volunteers, and they they help low income families with their vet bills, mm-hmm. which you know, right? That's one of the big dilemmas. It's yeah. like you just don't have three thousand dollars to go get to your go and do that, right? Yeah. yeah. And so I know that if yeah. we if we do this, this Beatles mm-hmm. music, a lot of people will probably think we're you know stepping on sacred ground. But I think it'll 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 be interesting to people. Yeah. And I know if we get these artists doing it. And I can say absolutely, it's done out of love. Yeah. No one is, no one's doing it. Everybody's doing it for free, volunteering right. all their time, all their, all their effort. So it isn't. No one's doing this to become more famous or to make money. And secretly, all the money is going to go to this little place. And I want it's it to so be not so secret anymore. Well, I want it to be in Oklahoma <laughs> City because I right. want it to seem like there was a lot of things that are out there that are trying, in a sense, to change the world. And that's mm. great. It's a mm. difficult thing. But I know, with just a little bit of concentrated effort, this thing in Oklahoma City. Five years from now, won't be there, and we can say, "Hey, man, Wayne's friends did that. They helped us do that. Yeah, that. yeah. Uh, it's so awesome, great. Yeah. It's fantastic. Well, thank, thank you, you yeah, so yeah. much for giving the time. For sure, yeah, yeah. And I can't wait to see what's next. I uh, know. <laughs> well, me neither. It's a 2014 interview with Wayne Coyne, and let's throw in one more. This one, uh, just about a year before that, I believe, in 2013. Now, this is right when they released The Terror, and we got to talk about the nude stage show they had to go along with it, as well as the concept of the album's darkness, their own legacy, and the image of Rockstar, part three of Kyle Meredith with the Flaming Lips. Hello. Lips. Hello, everybody. Hello, Kyle. It is great to have you here. All right. In Louisville, uh, forecast of 2013. But you should say, yeah. On the uh, mighty Ohio River. Yeah. The, and the messy Ohio River. Yeah, it, do- it doesn't usually look like that, does it? It, 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 you know, it takes a flood to bring in the, uh, to bring in the nastiness, to, to bring yeah. in the ugliness. But, well, it looks bad, but it's I mostly just a bunch of uh, limbs and wood. Yeah, it, yeah. It's not, it's not a horrible, horrible uh, amount of trash. It's a good, it doesn't have the, uh, the legendariness of like the, uh, the Mississippi, but you know, we're proud of it. Well, I thought it was the Mississippi. It's so big. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But there's a family of ducks right down there. There's some little yeah. babies and stuff. So it's not as hazardous as it may look. Yeah, they're living fine. They are. They're they living are. fine. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's let's get into 2013 right. here. Well, heck, I mean, the whole thing. I think you guys have one of the amazing careers of consistency. Oh, I you see. Well, thank stop. you. You do. You never, I, and Maybe I know we should stop. Yeah. I know we think about that all the time. Of like, I don't know that you. Um, I don't know that you have to. That's not really a, <laughs> a criticism or anything. But I don't know the way things go. You know, bands take off a, a second, but it doesn't seem like you guys ever do. And I don't know. It feels like you almost have to be a madman to pull off this kind of lifestyle. Well, thank you for saying that. I think, um, you know, there is something too when you when you uh, when you get down uh, you, when you talk to artists, mm-hmm. and I, I don't mean necessarily that bands aren't artists, but you know, the way that artists work is is a lot. Unfortunately, you know, a lot of it's just like every day you get up and do this sure, thing, sure. and that's how. But it's something you would do anyway. It is. It is. But but you know, people think that. Uh, they wrongly think that you sit around and wait for some inspiration and then yeah. you go and do it, you know. But you can't, you know. You, you th- There's oxygen right there. <laughs> but you just got to get up and do your thing all the time. Right, right. And it, then it, I think if you if something happens, you're, you know, the, if the luck hits you, then you can really roll with it. And I and part of it is I think I'm just really obsessed, you know, because I'm, I'm not doing music all the time. Sure, no, you've got you know? you've got all the projects, all kinds right, of stuff, right, right. and and I'm, and people are in my studio all the time, and I'm kind of producing and all that sort of stuff, and I love all that. So, um, and and the way that we play, you know, we kind of are always playing, but we never we're never playing for like six months in a row, right. you know. Like some groups will go out and they'll play for forever, and then they'll take forever off. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, about five years ago, we stopped doing that just because it, it became, I mean, Stephen has a couple of kids that are, are really sure. still pretty little. And so we decided that we would just 
treat it like we work down sure. the street at Target or McDonald's or well, something. After and, you know. three decades, you know, uh, of doing that and an amount of hits, I'm not sure you have to anymore either. Well, so. I think I think for some people it makes a lot of sense because they go out and they play everywhere, and then you don't see them for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, or it's just the way you get the machine geared sure, up. Sure. You know, there's a lot of equipment and a lot of guys and a lot of stuff that has to be, you know, taken around. But I think we're just lucky that as we went, you know, we own all the stuff. We have our own big warehouse. And I think it's just luck that it's worked out that we're kind of like a, a family circus. Yeah, and we go out and do the thing when we when we want to as opposed to the, the demand of the touring schedule. But that can, I think that sort of schedule sometimes really... Um, can defeat groups, you know, because oh, yeah, it's definitely. just it's, it's just a long, long commitment, yeah. and it's not always that much fun, and people get sick, and there's, you know, there's drugs and things involved, and so, yeah, it can be a struggle. I think yeah. you know, fans are learning that, too. You mentioned something a minute ago, kind of like uh, the way, uh, you, you know, a fan's perception uh, of you guys would be, and there's something about that, too, because they do have these expectations of what you're doing, and who you are, and, and what all this is, and there's got to be a point where, I guess it's the performer versus your own performance. I mean, you're, you're no, the front I mean, man. I don't, I don't think so. For me, it's all the same. Yeah. You know, it's not, I don't really go up there or even sit here with you and think, well, I've got to be this dude. I mean, I, yeah. I'm just So me. there's never an act that it ever goes into it. I mean, you're a creative person no, on no, top of it. So no. I mean, you know, I mean, I think, I think um, if you're lucky, um, you know, the things that you're doing and the, and, and the person you are and all that, I mean, they are the same yeah. thing. And I think that's why it's this, I mean, I... I don't want to say it's not a big deal, but I mean, yeah. this is just what we do. Sure, sure. You I know? guess it's the theatrics of, of the whole rock star, you know. Yeah, yeah, and, and I, I, I know what, what people mean. I mean, yeah. I've been around people who, um, and I, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but there's a there's a, a air of pretending mm -hmm. in the whole thing, you know, or there's image about it. But I don't really think we are about that anymore. I guess you know? Bowie comes to mind a little bit on that. You know? Yeah, but, for sure, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. he, he kind of has a thing, and, uh, and, and that actually brings up a, a, another fine point, you know, one once again, three decades in, you're going into the fourth decade as a flaming Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I just think of just beginning. The well, fourth decade. well, I think yeah, yeah. most artists, you know, at some point you'll lose their creative streak, and you know, and Bowie comes to mind as something that doesn't. Whereas the Stones, you know, oh, you want a new song? We're just going to write "Start Me Up One More Time" differently, and you guys have bypassed well, that it, it, entirely. Right. I, well, I think in in, in defense of anybody out there, I mean, I'm sure they're just doing what they like, and I, I think everybody's entitled yeah. at some point to say, um, you know. Do the, hi! <laughs> All right. You know, I mean, that's and that's what I'm doing. I'm not yeah. doing it because I think it's making the world a better place or it's progressing yeah. um, the world of ideas along. I'm just doing it because I, I want to. Sure. And I think that's, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that that's what everybody does. Yeah. And especially someone like a Mick Jagger or Keith Richards, I mean, I, I hope that they get up when they're 70 years old and say, I still like playing music and yeah. what does it matter? And um, so I, I, you know, I don't, I don't think what we're doing is different from what they're doing. They're probably doing what they like, same way say we, we are, you know. Well, but right. I think we're really lucky that we do have this curiosity about uh -huh. what is what is out there. What do we want to do? Well, you don't have to do the same thing over and over. But I think you stayed away from. I it. think we're lucky that the thing that we we've never been mega successful, mm -hmm. and so I can understand where it would be very tempting for. You know any group if yeah. you know if someone came up and said you know the thing that you do you do it so well that you can make a million dollars a week doing it but if you change you might not make you shit not make you know it, yeah. and you would probably say well gee you know that, that million dollar sounds nice yeah i could be a little unsatisfied and make a million dollars and so i mean and those aren't things you could judge before it happens so yeah. for us we've done things here and there where we thought, well, we'll take the money as opposed to doing what we want. And it was just so horribly unsatisfying um, that we wouldn't do it again. But no one has come up and said, we'll give you a million dollars sure, either. Sure, sure. So, so we'll see. Well, well, the Terror is a great example. The Terror, the brand new record of, of you guys really changing on a dime whenever you yeah. want to. I mean, it yeah. kind of started with the, the record before this, too. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know. I think every review I read, it seems like everyone's kind of crutching on one thing with a terror and saying, it's a dark record. Well, yeah, and it I can a understand. Because you're the one in it. You're, you're yeah, the one yeah. who's living the record. You're the yeah, one who's yeah. singing the record. Do yeah, you yeah. see it like that? Well, I think we discovered a couple of you know, different ways of, of recording. We have this little synthesizer that uh, we got from Sean Lennon. We were at his studio, and we started playing around with it. And I think... Part of its appeal, this little synthesizer, it's a really old synthesizer, is that you play notes and accompanying the notes 
or these little tritone electronic, right. you know, sort of after effects. And for musicians, you know, this is this is it's beautiful because a lot, a lot of times nowadays it's it's easy to get pure notes. Everything's already in tune. You can just hit things, and part of your brain really loves when the world is in harmony. Sure. You know, that's why harmony even exists. It's like, oh, that goes so well with this. This is the mathematics of songwriting, the science of songwriting. Well, how you... or just or just that you can, you, when you hear it, you like it. Sure, right. You know what I mean? But part of what this synthesizer would keep telling us is that, yeah, this is working on one musical level, but on another musical level, it wasn't working at all. But it really appealed to us. And I think it, it, it was affecting, uh, you know, whatever part of our brain was not wanting perfect harmonies or whatever. And it would, it not didn't make us write the songs, but it urged us to write these types of songs that I think we're dealing with that kind of gray amb ambiguity of, the way your life really is. Sure. And I think that's why people relate to it so much because, I mean, I, I'm not putting well, it down, but I... it's a beautiful record well, in, it, in, in the oddest sort of way. Right, know? I mean, we would say that it's ourselves. Like say it's like it's Well, thank you. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's like a Kubrick We'd film. We'd say yeah. it's like our most, it's like our most um, depressing but most triumphant record yeah. I think we've, we've done. Yeah. Because it's not, it's not cartoon-like in its reach. It's right. not saying, right. oh, everything's going to be beautiful forever. You know, it's really saying, yeah, you know, beauty is is here, and 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 pain is here, and yeah. you know. But I don't think I don't want people to think that our lives have gotten so dark mm. and so painful. I think it's just there's an urge to make this kind of music when when those sounds happen. And I, and we hadn't really done music. We hadn't really embraced that much of that type of music yeah, and yeah. I think we we wanted to we like it well there's a, something about that too because when a fan listens to the record there's a big character study that goes along with that this is this is how we get to know you this is how we get to know you well, and, exactly yeah and when, yeah. when it's you know whether it's the lyrics are autobiographical and everything yeah, yeah, yeah there becomes that line where you're saying this is how much I want to let out there before it just becomes gossip well I don't <laughs> think of it like that I mean I I mean I, I'm sure if I was Beyonce or someone like that there could be a lot more of that going on but I don't think of it like that I think the best thing I can do is just to be completely me and right. be as you know be honest or whatever that is because sometimes you know, you're you're coming up with a song or coming up, up with lyrics, and you don't really know what the fuck you're gonna say. I mean, there is there is no you don't sit there and know everything you're gonna do and write it down. You just will say something that we say that it comes. You know, it, it sort of squirts out of your subconscious or whatever. But on the other side of that, these things squirt out of you, and you still get a chance to choose whether you're gonna keep it or dismiss it. And there's. A really great line on the record, and I say great because I, I just sort of, it's, it, I didn't really think of it, it just sort of happened, yeah. where it says we don't control the controls. And part of that is, I, I, I believe it's true for my life, that there's, you know, an element of, of what I do is that I feel like I should control it, because if I control it, it'll go this way and it'll go that way. But then I also know that if I control it, it becomes virtually the same thing every time, because I'm not, I'm not really aware of all the little nuances of what I do, so I don't always, I don't want to have control because there's no surprises sure. left, there's no, there's no new path, you know, so it's, it's a quagmire, you know, you, like all artists, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm probably a, a dictator at heart and I want to, I want to rule the world. But it's your art, you know. Well, it starts out that way, but then I think sometimes our most beautiful stuff that we do is that we see things in the world and make it our art and that and that's probably more more true for what we what we want now i think in the beginning when you have no control you think you want it all and then when you like like the way our life works now when you can control it all you don't really want to. <laughs> Kyle, what am because, I going to do? Yeah, right. Yeah, well, well, well it, it is a great new act uh, for the Flaming Lips. It, it's even almost like amnesia because, if, you know, like we recognize the face, it kind of sounds the same, <laughs> but there's nothing else about it that's real. And, and, and for, you know, for a fan uh, listening to you guys, that's important. Like, to, well, for yeah. something new to feed on. Well, I think it, for our know. fans, I wouldn't say for all groups. I think some groups, if they went too radical, um, would probably lose everybody, yeah. you know, but I think our, our fans, um, most of them are artists themselves. Yeah. They're, they're people who are in bands themselves. They're making music. They're involved in some thing about art and music. And yeah, I think, because I think what it says to them is like, 
you know, maybe someday you're going to want to change. Yeah. And you want to see that there's examples of people out there that said, they did it, I, I can do it. And yes, it's it's scary and you don't really know if it's going to work. I, I still don't know if what we're doing now works or if it doesn't uh, work. It'd be written about in the, uh, the rock history books. <laughs> well, no. thank you. Thank you. Thank Michael you. Jackson's man in the mirror, every lyric coming into this. <laughs> well, thank you. Wayne, it has been so awesome. Well, thank you. Yeah, you. yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, everywhere yeah. this whole thing goes, we're going to be on board. So. Well, perfect. Well, thank you. Yeah, yeah. And right. let's hope uh, yeah. it, it, it worked out that the river didn't rise <laughs> up. Wash us away. And wrapping up there with that uh, 2013 interview with Wayne Coyne of the Flaming Lives talking about that record, The Terror. And again, thanks to Wayne for the uh, latest conversation and the new Flaming Lips record, King's Mouth Music and Songs. Definitely looking forward to the upcoming releases as well. And thanks to you for uh, listening to this entire episode, all three parts. Uh, I do hope before you get out of here that you give the series a rating or leave a review. Uh, and if, of course, if you're not subscribed, uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Uh, new interviews every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday every single week. It is a lot to keep up with, so let us help you out with a subscription just hit subscribe wherever you're listening from and again uh, you can do that anywhere you get your favorite podcast from after that head to wfpk.org where i do a show monday through friday at 6 p.m eastern it's an hour full of uh, song premieres music news anniversary spins and even more interviews that's wfpk.org consequence of sound has your music and film news you can also find me at twitter at kyle meredith facebook slash kyle meredith and that does it for another edition. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time. Consequence Podcast Network.